Domestic pressure is increasing on President Joe Biden to stop weapons being sent from the US to Israel. Key ally and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is among those who've signed a letter from dozens of congressional Democrats. Well, the letter says this. In light of the recent strike against aid workers and the ever-worsening humanitarian crisis, we believe it is unjustifiable to approve these weapons transfers. Now, it goes on to say, if it is found that this strike violated US or international law, those responsible must be held accountable. OK, for more on this, we're going to uh, go now to Shihab Ratanzi, who is in Washington, D.C., for us. And as we know, for some time, Biden has resisted these calls to stop weapons uh, shipments to Israel. Is there any sign that this letter is actually going to make any difference at this point? Not yet. John Kirby at the White House on Friday said two things related to this letter, I suppose, is that one, and the letter is calling for a U.S. investigation into what happened to those World Central Kitchen a aid workers. Kirby said there's no plans for any kind of U.S. investigation and there's no plans for uh, any curtailment of, of weapons uh, weapons transfers at, at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, the, the problem with this letter is, yeah, this is all very well and it's significant. Nancy Pelosi, I mean, really, there was a sharp intake of breath when we saw her name on, on this letter. The idea that she would even suggest conditionality for, for, for arms shipments, even though that is actually the U.S. That is the U.S. law, the Leahy, the so-called Leahy law, which means that you can't ship weapons to someone who's abusing human rights. And nonetheless, having her name was significant, given the power of the Israeli lobby and so on. But there's no kind of or else in this letter. Or else what? So they've got their, their names on the line now. They've signed their, this letter. But they're not saying, OK, if you don't do that, then we're going to do this. I mean, one way of testing how significant this was, this is, is if were a number of these, 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 these members of Congress did actually vote for further arms shipments for Israel, so if they withhold their vote, that would be something. But now we know that the Biden administration is bypassing Congress to send weapons to Israel. It's using accounting techniques. It's, it's, it's shipping weapons up to the threshold that Congress has to approve more weapons shipments. So it's unlikely that they will be tested now. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's unclear yet whether this is performative. Clearly, as you say, they are feeling pressure from their local constituents but what are they going to do about it other than write a letter? That's what we have to see. Mm, indeed. And, Shihab, uh, regarding the phone call between Biden and Netanyahu, how has that been received uh, within the US? Has there been any reaction or fallout from that as Biden continues to, I guess, outwardly put more pressure on Netanyahu? I think the White House got the headlines it wanted, that, you know, Biden is now is now putting the pressure and clearly Israel has said, you know, it, it's going to allow some shipments in. I mean, the, the problem for Biden, though, was that just proved to everyone just how weak he's been or whether... I mean, it, it raised more questions because it suggested that Biden could have done this at any point, that there was no need for children to die of starvation. Biden could have could have done this earlier, so that mm. was some sort of blowback. Then, of course, we have the the, the Israeli, uh, the pro-Israeli lobbies here saying, you know, you're putting too much pressure on Israel. So, of course, we're seeing the walkbacks now. We're seeing the letters being sent to Qatar and Egypt by the White House suggest, look, we're we're pressuring all sides in the in the in the negotiations. And then the most interesting story, I think, was. Even the Israelis were a bit confused by some of the headlines and what Biden said on that phone call. The question was, was Biden delinking the issue of the hostage release from some sort of immediate temporary ceasefire? Even the Israelis were confused by what Biden was saying. And immediately the next day, that was all walked back by the White House saying, no, 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 no. We only talk, we're only talking about a ceasefire in the context of the release of the hostages. If that had been delinked, that would be very, very significant. It turns out that isn't what Biden was saying, much to the relief of the Israelis, who had to ask for clarification themselves. OK, thank you so much, Shihab. Shihab Ratanzi there for us in Washington, D.C. Well, Al Jazeera senior political analyst Mohan Bashawa joins us uh, again. Thanks very much for being here. Uh, Mohan, as we heard uh, there from Shihab, he said that there are no consequences to that letter. What do you make of that aspect of it, even though clearly there is pressure ramping up on Joe Biden? That's it. I mean, it's nuanced. It's getting a bit complicated for the Biden administration. That doesn't mean uh, this will automatically lead to a decisive action on the part of the uh, American president. But pressure is building up. Uh, pressure is building up internationally, regionally, but also domestically in the United States. 
And I think uh, just looking at some of the, uh, you know, signatories and, and looking at how things are ramping up in, in Washington, my philosophy has always been, if you want to know how or where things are going, follow the opportunists. Mm. And clearly, things are changing in Washington and in the United States. And why? that's why a lot of people are jumping ship or changing directions. Because they understand that, uh, at least in the Democratic Party and among independents, there is an Israel fatigue. There's a Netanyahu fatigue, for sure. The number I have been uh, uh, looking at closely is not the 33,000 people uh, who died in Gaza and not the 20-plus thousand children and women who were killed in Gaza, although this is the most important of all numbers. But the Biden administration is looking at number 47,000. And that is the number of Wisconsinians Democrats who went to the primaries, they actually, in a cold day, got off, went to the polling station, and voted uncommitted. Mm. This is part of the anti-Biden campaign that says, we're going to put the president on notice. Their goal was 20,000 uncommitted. They got 47,000. Now, Wisconsin, like Michigan, that had 100,000 uncommitted voters, like Ohio, like Florida, like North Carolina, Pennsylvania, these are what you call swing states. This is where President Biden won in, in 2020 with a very small margin. In Wisconsin, it was 20,000. Now you have 47,000 uncommitted. So the pressure is building up in the, Democrat, in the Democratic Party and in, uh, in the United States. And so Biden has to do one of two things. Either he has to maintain the usual keeping up appearances of doing something without really doing anything meaning the ice cream diplomacy, or even the phone call diplomacy. Or he gets serious and does some serious diplomacy, because we've seen just from the phone call mm. that things are changing somewhat in Israel and on the part of the Israeli government. So imagine if it's real weight that's been put in Israel. OK, so you, there's the option that he could get serious or can get more serious. What would that look like? What would he need to say? And I guess more importantly, what would he need to do? It's some of the things that, uh, for example, uh, Shehab has mentioned that Democrats are asking for. He needs to do them. For example, he says, no more weapons. We are freezing all shipments of weapons. Even the things that we agreed to before or this week, we are not shipping. No more ammunitions, no more 2,000-pound bombs, mm. no more F-35s, right? So at least you can start with the military. Then you can go into other forms of aids. Then you can simply put Israel on notice that we, the United States, cannot be complicit in war crimes or in genocide or in what have you. And this is an election year. I don't have time for you and for your games. Stop lying to us. So when we put pressure on you before, you said, no, no, it's technicality. That's why we cannot get the aid in. No, it's not technicality. Mm. It's political. And it's racist. And it's inhumane to starve the people in Gaza. It's a war crime. It's a genocidal war crime to starve the people in Gaza. So now, within 48 hours, we're seeing that the, 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 the amount of trucks are multiplying that are going to Gaza. So in fact, there mm. was no technical problem. There was a political problem. So you can see just by a, a mere phone call, and, and by the way, it's, it's fascinating, right? The past 72 hours, I think, 48 hours, mm. we've all been hanging our hats on the damn phone call. And it's just a phone call, right? Imagine if he, he, Biden convenes his, uh, his cabinet and takes some serious decisions and really puts Israel in order, says, if you don't do one, two, three, four, we're going to do one, two, three, four. Mm. We judging from the phone call that the, that the sky doesn't fall in Washington if an American administration uses its leverage with Israel. In fact, it becomes more popular yes. at home, yeah. right? So clearly there's now a precedent, just in recent memory, whereby the American president can use his, his influence, his power, his leverage on the Israeli government and change things in Gaza. It's unfortunate that he didn't for the past six months. But as one... As one, uh, uh, as one newspaper edit editorialized, it's maybe a bit too late, but it doesn't have to be too little. Yeah. America can use some serious pressure to get some serious results because enough is enough, right, in Gaza.
Okay, we'll have to leave it there. But thanks, as always, Mawan Bashar, senior political editor. Thank you.